Philippians chapter 1, verse 19 says, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. Verse 21. For to me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your word. Your word that is forever settled. Sure and steadfast and anchor for our soul. And Lord, today as we look into your word, I pray for your... You, Holy Spirit, to anoint us, anoint us, God, that we may understand, that we may, God, that revelation and illumination may come as we look at your word together. God, that this would not just be an ordinary Sunday, but Lord, uh, something would pierce and stick and, and take root, God, that you would accomplish an amazing thing today in our midst. I ask that, Lord, that you would do that. Speak, O Lord. Speak to our hearts. Bless this time we have together. Anoint me in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. This morning I want to preach to you on to live is Christ. To live is Christ. This is one of those Bible verses that I remember one minister said about this type of verse. He says this is a coffee mug verse or a t-shirt verse, or a hat verse. This, that is, it's one of those verses in the Bible that's short and to the point, but at the same time, there's a, a depth to it, a weightiness to it, that you, you read it and it has an effect. Even, even in such a short verse, this is one of those verses that, that are short and powerful and weighty. And here you see Paul is has this verse as he's writing to the church at Philippi. And as you read this relatively short letter that the Apostle Paul wrote, it's four chapters in our Bible, it's it's pretty short. You could sit down and in one sitting and read that in about 12 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on how quick you read. But you'll see a common theme, a thread throughout this small four chapter letter and it's that of joy that of a rejoicing and he'll say things like this just to just to give you a flavor of it he says in verse 4 I make my request for you with joy he says in Philippians 1:18 he rejoices that Christ is preached in Philippians 2, 17 and 18 he says I am glad and rejoice with you all He writes in Philippians 3 and verse 1, Rejoice in the Lord. And then perhaps the the most well-known verse about rejoicing, Again I say rejoice. He says here, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And you see this theme of joy, of being glad. Uh, He'll make a statement and say, I am glad. And I I want you to realize that this, this is not coming from somebody that is on vacation, right? Out that he can go and get all of his needs. This is not coming from somebody where everything is in order and all the ducks are in a row and everything is as he... This is coming from a man who is sitting in a Roman prison cell, right? He, he's, he's not at liberty to go and do what he wants to do. In fact, he's under the will of somebody else, but yet he's writing this letter... And he'll say, I am glad. Not only was he a prisoner, but he was a prisoner unjustly, right? 
that he should not have even been there, that if it was, if it was a just circumstance, he would have been free already. He, he would not have had to be where he is at. He's in prison is for a purpose that is bigger than himself, right? In fact, he'll make this statement in Ephesians 3 and verse 1. He'll say he calls himself the prisoner of Christ for you Gentiles. He realizes it's for Christ's purpose in his life that he is in that prison cell. He realizes that it is exactly where God would have him to be and that it, he realizes that he is right within the purpose of Christ for his life and for his ministry. And you see here, it's, it, you realize that Paul understood that it's for Christ. He, he realized that his day-to-day -day operated with this as the foundation. It's Christ. It's for Christ. Everything that I do is for Jesus, whether I'm walking on a prison cell, it is for Christ. My entire life functions for this one name, Jesus. He says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. You get a flavor of the Apostle Paul right there. You get a sense of his attitude. He says his desire there is that Christ would be magnified either by his life or even by his death. Even if even in this would happen, you realize that there would come a time when the Apostle Paul would be led out of prison and he would be poured out as a drink offering. the dominion of Nero, the emperor, and he would be taken out and his head would be taken off. Right? He would. He would seal his faith with his own blood. But here you see here, he, he desires that Christ be magnified by life or death. And then he says in verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ. And to die. He makes this statement and he says... For to me. Number one, it was personal. It was personal. Notice he says, for to me, Paul knew Christ. He knew Jesus. He had a personal encounter with Jesus that totally transformed. him, literally, literally took him from one direction and turned him to a different direction. He, he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. He, he realized this morning, he, Paul realized that this was or a, another religion that came into existence. This man named Jesus was, was not just a religious figure. He was not just a ragtag prophet that had a few followers that decided to really be committed to him. This man named Jesus was, is the Son of God. And when Paul came in contact with this man named Jesus, it was an encounter that utterly changed his life. It was personal. He experienced him. He encountered him so much so that he could say, for to me, for to me. It was personal. With this man named Jesus. Is it personal? Is it more than just the saying of a creed or the reciting of a catechism? Is it, is it more 
than just saying, well, my mom was close to this man or my grandpa knew him or my family members. They, I, they, there were a few of them that... that Can you, could you make that same statement for to me? Paul would say things like, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I love the exchange that Jesus has with his disciples. We read about it in Matthew chapter 16 at Caesarea Philippi. And I want you to turn with me there. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, verse 15, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Oh, I could ask you this morning, who do you say that he is? Right? He's asking you that. Who do you say that he is? Right? Who, who do you say? And then he says in verse 16, the reply of the apostle Peter. He says, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He confesses that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was personal. He knew him. And I want to say to you today, can you say that? Can you make that statement for to me? Is it a personal thing? Who, who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you confess that he is, right? Is he just another religious figure? Is he just a prophet? Is he just some figurehead that left us a good example in the past that people can... of the world. That's the most important question that you can answer. Who do you say that I am? Amen. We read of another encounter, another exchange in John chapter 6. Now I want to say to you that Jesus did not have a hard time saying hard things. He didn't. He didn't have a hard time speaking the truth, even to people that did not want to hear the truth. If you read... ...as with the scribes and the Pharisees, you can feel the tension. If you read it out loud, you can, you can feel the weight of what is happening. And this is one of those instances where Jesus is speaking to the crowd and he had just fed the multitude the day before. He had fed them. He multiplied it. In fact, they were so pleased with it that Jesus had to leave because he knew they would come by force. over the Sea of Tiberias and they come searching for him and then he goes through this narrative where he says to them, you are searching for me because you ate the loaves and the fish. And then he goes through the, I am the bread of heaven. I am the bread that came down from heaven. He who eats of me, he unless, and then he makes this crazy statement that they could not handle. And he says to them, unless you eat my flesh, the world they said this is a hard saying who can under who can understand it this is a hard saying and then it says after this 
that many of those who were his disciples left and followed him no more. Right? They left him. He says a hard saying. Man, there's a sermon right there. He says a hard saying. Right? How many people still do the same thing, right? There's a hard saying, something they don't understand yet. And instead of humbling themselves before the Lord, saying, Lord, teach me, teach me, they leave. But here's the exchange that takes place. We read this in verse 67. Then Jesus said to the twelve, this is after the multitude left. He said, do you also want to go away? Do you also want to go away? Simon Peter answered him. Of eternal life. And look at what Peter says in verse 69. Also, we have come to believe and know. Believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was personal. And Paul, in Philippians chapter 1, in verse 21, he says, For to me it was personal. He had had an encounter with the risen Lord, and not only that, he had had an encounter with the grace of God. How many... You don't deserve it, but God has shown it to you, revealed it to you, amen, and it utterly changed your life. Grace! Paul had an encounter, so much so that he could say, but beyond just a statement of doctrine, and thank God for doctrine, beyond just a statement of a creed, For to me. And then he says there, For to me, to live is Christ. For to me, to live is Christ. Secondly, it is purposeful. It is purposeful. Look at what he says. For to me, to live is Christ. My life's purpose. My life's ambition. My life's value. by my current circumstances because my life is Christ. My worth is not in what I own, nor in the strength of flesh and bone, right? Amen. It's not in any of those things, but it is found in Jesus Christ. My worth, who I am as a human being, it finds its value, its purpose, and its function not in what I do, not in the way that I look, not in my house. That I am in Christ. I belong to Him. And no matter what happens, no matter what comes my way, I have purpose, I have value, I have worth because I am in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So much people, their identity is wrapped up in what they do or what they own, right? Their identity is attached. who they are anymore. They don't know what they're doing anymore, right? But if you are in Christ, you can be sitting in a prison cell. You cannot even have freedom and then say, my life is Christ. For to, for to me to live is Christ. Christ. Here we see, look at how Paul's life was lived. He says... But I want you to know that me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard 
to the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice. Yes, and will rejoice. What does he say there? He says, even being in jail has turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, right? Even, even my circumstances have turned out for a purpose that God is using it to further the gospel. And then he speaks about those who are preaching the word of God. And he says, some of them aren't doing of the right foundation for why they're doing it. Some people do, but what does he say at the end of the day? He said, I, re I rejoice because Christ is being preached, right? People are hearing about Jesus. So was his life. He would say things like this in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. For I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ. Verse 7 he says of chapter 3, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I. Life for Jesus. And you see this morning. We have purpose in Christ. We aren't just sacks of water. Right? That walk on this earth for 80 years and die to be eaten by worms. Right? That's a pretty bleak outlook. You talk about a worldview that's not a Christian worldview, you can have that worldview. You can have it all day long. With that worldview out there, why not just have all the pleasure you want, right? Why not just do whatever the heck you want? Because there's absolutely no meaning to life, right? There's none. Eating worldviews and, and where truth and reality come from, I want to say to you that at the end of the day, you live, a, you live a, just a short life. You work a monotonous job till you, till you go to be eaten by worms. That, that's right. You, do a, you have a few cruises along the way. You go on vacation once a, once a week out of the year, right? You watch a little TV, cheer for a football team, and then you die. kill themselves left and right. No wonder people have no hope, right? No wonder, no wonder, right? But I want to tell you this morning, if you belong to Jesus, your life has purpose, it has value, there is a meaning there, a function there that you did not have before, and it all is for Him. Amen? Amen. You see... Your life has purpose. The King of glory stepped out of eternity into time. We were watching this video of the crossroads. You know Jesus walked those crossroads. Jesus traversed the streets of Israel up and down. He went through those very places we were looking at. This man named Jesus claimed to be more than a man. 
he had a, a group of followers come around him, right? And he went in Galilee and he traveled on a circuit through Galilee. Then he would make a trip for the feast down into Jerusalem and he would do signs in Jerusalem and then he would go back into Galilee and continue his ministry. oppressed of the devil and then he made one last trip at the age of 33 him and his disciples came down for the Passover and as he was making his way down he said the son of man is going to be betrayed and handed over into the hands of sinners and he is going to be crucified and on the third day he is going to rise Right, But it happened just exactly as he said. While he was there, one of his very own sold him and sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. They came under the cloak of darkness and they grabbed him out of the Garden of Gethsemane and they took him in. him questions and he did not open up his mouth and then finally the high priest said I adjure you by the living God tell us are you the Christ and he said it is as you say and henceforth you will see the son of man coming on the clouds of glory with power amen and then the high priest he rips his clothes and then they delivered him over to Pilate Pilate didn't even want to crucify him Pilate didn't want anything to do with him but the crowd around was saying crucify him crucify him so finally him over. They lead him out, right? After they out to a hill called Calvary and they crucified him on that cross. And while he was on the cross, my sin, your sin, the sin of the entire world was laid upon him. We, you realize this morning, the curse that was put on the earth was laid upon him. The separation that sin brought was laid upon him. And to God. The curse is lifted. All of these things are brought back to where they should be because of what he did. Amen. You see this morning, life has value. Life has For to me to live is Christ. Christ is our purpose. We may have different calls. We may have different gifts. But Christ, Christ is our life. Christ. And that means whether you're in a dead-end job where you don't see any future, I want to say to you, there's value there. Why? Not because you get recognized by those at work. Not because you get all the accolades. There's value there because you're there for Christ. You're there for Him, right? You're there. He is your purpose. For to me, to live. You died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory. And then look at the last part of that. To die is gain. It's, thirdly, it is perpetual. It is perpetual. For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Verse 22, he says, But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. 
He says he's not sure what he wants. He knows if he remains, there'll be fruit for his ministry. But it's to go and be with Jesus is far better. The moment, listen, the moment you close your eyes in death, the moment that your the moment that that takes place and the Lord says it's time, the, that moment you are immediately in the presence of God. You are immediately, immediately in His presence. Right? That's why Paul would make the statement to die is gain. It's gain. Right? To die. He says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, and to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, This day, in paradise. This day. Can I smash something real quick? Can I just demolish an argument that I've run into, and I'm sure some of you have? There's no such thing as soul sleep. Say, well, when you die, you basically just go to sleep until the resurrection. You're unconscious, you're just in the grave. I want to tell you that is absolutely unbiblical. Right? The cults teach that. The cults teach that. Right? That's not Christianity. The moment you die, the moment. into the presence of God. Amen? Amen! The moment, that's, that's why, brothers and sisters, that's why if you choose to surrender to the call of God and you go over to somewhere where there's persecution and you go into the midst of it, right? And you say, Jesus can save you and they kill you, it, the, uh, immediately you go into the presence of God. Amen? Instant death, instant glory. Amen. Instant death, instant glory. To be absent from the body. To be present with the body. It's perpetual. For to me to live is Christ. It was personal. It was per for to me. For to me, right? Can you say that today? Is it personal? Have you had an encounter with Him? Who do you say that He is? Who do you say that He is? Have you come in contact with Him? Can you say this morning, it's purposeful. My life has value and meaning because to live is Christ. My life has value and purpose. To die his gain. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Christ. Christ. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, if I, and we could talk about this later after I. Give you a bunch of reasons why. But if I ever got one, it would be this verse. <laughs> I'm, t I'm serious. If I ever got one, it would be this verse. Amen? For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain.
Hallelujah. Can you say this morning, can you say, can you say that? It's personal. For to me, amen, beyond the, thank God for Sunday school, thank God for kids church, right? Thank God for mamas and grandmas and dads that brought us to church and all of that and all those good things. But it's got to move beyond that. It's got to move into experience. You've got to be able to say, for to me, for to me, amen, it's, it's got to move beyond. tell you God is not a liar his word is true before we move on and we're going to pray for something else but before we do that the word of God says if you believe in your heart that Christ has risen from the dead that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be, what? Saved. Man, not might be, there's a chance, you shall be. You don't go on a, I was in the United Steelworkers Union, I was on a 60 day probation period, right? Where they before I could enter the union, before they gave me the card and made me a card carrying United Steelworker. I had to go on a probation period, 60 days. They could let me go in that 60 days. I want to tell you, you don't go into the probation period. The minute you believe on Jesus, the minute, the moment you call upon Him with faith, you will be saved. Man, that is such good news. That is an, that's amazing news. Right? It's not a 12-step program. Right? It's not levels that you have to achieve. In the moment saving faith happens right here, the moment you cry out, you will be saved. Man, that is such good news. That means it don't matter what the heck you've done. It don't matter. You could be the most vile, wicked person. It does not matter. The moment, the moment you cry out, salvation. Amen. And I want to tell you today, do that. If you don't know him, call upon his name. Lord, God, I pray over those who are here today. And Father, I pray, God, if there's someone here that can't say it's personal, I pray today, God, that you'd move on their heart. You'd reveal yourself to them. And God, that they would call on your name. That they would call on their name, your name. That they would trust in you. That they would believe on you. That they may be saved. Lord, if there's someone watching online and they just randomly are, are watching with us and they've heard what I've said, I pray, Lord, that they would call on your name. That they would be saved. That you love them, you care for them. Their life has value, purpose in you. God, reveal yourself to them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now this morning, as a way of closing, as a way of closing, I'm going to ask that you would join me in this altar.
How many know that there's power in agreement? There's power in agreement. A threefold cord, right, is not quickly broken. There's power in agreement. If one or two of us shall agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done, right? And I asked you last week to write down what you're asking God to do in your life over this 21-day period. Husbands and wives, if you're near each other, make sure nobody's alone, right? Make sure nobody's alone. But let's agree together in prayer. Let's take somebody's hand, lay somebody's, lay our hand on somebody's shoulder. Or... But let's agree together. Somebody get Sister Campbell over there. But let's agree together. Let's ask God to move. And those petitions that we've presented before him, let's pray together. Lord, this morning we come to you in agreement as a church, as the body of Christ. We are in agreement, Lord. And God, we need you to move in our life. We need you to move in specific areas in our life, God. Lord, there, there is someone here I know, Lord, that needs direction. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would order their steps, that you would direct them. I pray, Lord, that there would be a confirmation, a confirmation with peace, a confirmation of maybe another witness to bear witness to it, God. I pray, God, for there to be a confirmation on, on your leading in their life. Lord, I pray for those who are praying. Father, they are praying and they're lifting up a prodigal before you, Lord. They're lifting up somebody that has gone away from you, God. And Lord, we know, we know we cannot change a heart. We know God, to take out the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. But we know, God, you do. We know, Lord, that you are well able to do this. And so, Lord, we pray for them. We pray, God, that they would be saved. God, that they would not be lost. That you would do a work in their life. God, we pray for laborers. We pray for those that can exercise influence over their life to come into their life at the right time. God, we pray for Philip and the Ethiopian type encounters to take place in their life, God, that you would move in them, Lord. And Father, I pray this morning that those whose heart cry is for more of you, their heart cry is for more of your presence in their life, to know you, God, I pray that we would come to know you more, that we would be able to say with Paul, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That we would know you, God. That we would know you and experience your presence more and more in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now raise your hands and let's just praise God. Lord, we praise you. We praise you, God. We praise you and we worship you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tonight at 6 o'clock we have prayer meeting. Usually lasts about an hour and ten minutes, so if you want to come and be a part of that, please do. The Bengals don't play till 8.15, right? You think I'm not going to watch that game? You think I'm not going to? We got prayer at six, so if you can come and be a part of that, please come. The only way I'm not going to watch it is if the Lord shows up and we can't leave. Amen? And He can do that anytime He wants. Amen? Amen. You guys have a good day. Thank you so much for joining us this morning in our time of worship and the Word. And I would encourage you, if you need anything, if you need prayer or whatever you may need, we are here for you. And I want to personally encourage you to reach out to us with any prayer requests or, or questions that you may have about the Lord. Thank you and have a blessed day.